Right, I'd like you to look back at your notes, please, on the classification process. I'd like you to look back at your notes, please, on page one zero, page 98. If I'm walking down the street and I see somebody wearing high heels and a dress, I would imagine they're probably going to be a woman. <laughs> if I'm walking down the street and I see somebody with very long hair, probably going to be a woman. But the definition of a woman is not someone who's got long hair. Could be a hippie. The definition of a woman is not someone who wears a dress. Could be a Scotsman. <laughs> Transvestite, whatever, well, let's not go there. What the standard says is that in classifying between finance leases and operating leases, look for clues. Because the definition of a finance lease is not a black and white definition. It depends on judgment. It depends on whether or not, in your opinion, substantially all the risks and rewards of ownership pass. So at the inception of the lease, a decision has to be made, an evaluation has to be made, a judgment has to be made, a principle has to be applied. And what the standard does is to say, this is a clue, and this is a clue, and this is a clue. So it's not about this being the definition of a finance lease, but there are indicators and suggestions of being a finance lease. And we've seen already the clues are going to be fairly, how can I put it, heavy-handed. Because it's an exam. Whilst in the real world, a lease agreement may have 20 clauses, 20 pages, 20 paragraphs, a legal drawn up by a lawyer. In the exam, you've got two sentences, three or four sentences, describing the nature of the lease. So, the following are indications it's a finance lease. A major part of the economic life. Four out of four, it's a finance lease. Four out of ten, it's an operating lease. Eight out of ten, I'm not sure. Somewhere there's a judgment line. But if it's nine, nine and a half, nine and three quarters out of ten, it's a finance lease. If it's four, five or six, it's an operating lease. And somewhere in between, I'm not 100% certain. And I would look for other clues. Title. If title passes, that is indicative of it being a finance lease. If at some stage in the lease, title passes, then that is a finance lease. If the lease has an option to buy the asset at a bargain, if during the period of the lease, the lessee has the choice of buying the asset very cheaply, then they will. And if they do buy the asset, they are the only ones then who are going to exclusively benefit from the use of the asset. So that would be an indication of a finance lease. Present value of the minimum lease payment, a bit of number crunching. If you discount the future payments, if that amounts to basically the cash price, then it's a finance lease. Uh, the leased assets are specialized, unique. So they've been adapted to so the only person who is going to benefit from the asset is the lessee, 
because they're the only ones who can use that type of machine installed in that particular way on that particular factory. If the lessee is entitled to cancel the lease, then they have to compensate the lessor for all of the losses. Therefore, they're not going to cancel the lease. Yeah. So we know that the lessee is going to be the one who gets the benefit from the asset. The lessee is able to continue to lease the asset for a secondary period at a peppercorn rate. If sorry, I don't make this one. The weather was quite the weather. <laughs> I was nearly late today because of the because of the weather. <laughs> No, it was because of the uh, train. The train was packed. I had to wait a couple of trains before I could get up. <laughs> get onto the train. It's like Singapore. Everyone was standing very, very rigidly in line. Very good. And then you go for it and you can't go on. Anyway. <laughs> So the lessee has the ability to continue to lease the asset for a secondary period at a very cheap rate. So, you know, if after five years you've leased the asset and then you've got a secondary period where you can lease the asset for another one dollar, then clearly if the asset extends and has a longer life than we originally thought, that would be indicative of us benefiting if the asset has a long life. And any gains or losses from fluctuating in the fair value of the residual value to the lessee, yeah, falls to us. So gains or losses from the fluctuation of the residual value fall to the lessee. So if we look after the asset, and at the end of the lease it's a very, very valuable asset because we've barely used it, we benefit from that residual value. So these are a list of clues that would suggest it is a finance lease. Now the key thing, or the key takeaway from that list, I mean the major ones, the obvious ones are to do with the economic life, the title, the bargain option, but the key takeaway from that list is that it's a matter of judgement. Yeah, That it's a subjective judgement. That it is a subjective judgement. That the classification is principles based, that it's a subjective judgment and the classification is principles based. big time in June. It was a massive 25 mark question precisely on the points that I'm about to make. So I do want to cover it um, because I do believe it is still relevant in the context of the framework. So, <coughs> the classification process is a subjective process which results in an all or nothing approach. Leases are treated in radically different ways. If it's an operating lease, no asset, no liability. If it's a finance lease, there is an asset and there is a liability recognised. So you have for similar items radically different treatments. And the classification is done on a subjective basis. Which is the prettier? Which is the preferable? Which is the nicer classification from the creative accounting point of view? Is it prettier to have a finance lease with its asset and liability, or is it prettier to have an operating lease? Operating lease. Because an operating lease does not recognize 
the liability. Yeah. So with an operating lease, there's no liability. So the liability is off balance sheet. With an operating lease, there is no liability. So the liability is off balance sheet. So the gearing is kept down. So it's cheaper and easier to borrow money. So problems with international accounting standard 17 include a subjective classification process. A subjective classification process. Similar items with a radically different treatment. Similar items with a radically different treatment. So we have an all or nothing approach. We have an all or nothing approach. There is off balance sheet finance or operating leases. There is off balance sheet finance or operating leases. The accounts are therefore incomplete. The accounts are therefore incomplete. The accounts are therefore arguably not reliable. And arguably there is a conflict with the framework. Arguably there is a conflict with the framework. And it's this idea of a conflict with the framework that actually is the most appealing point about talking about leases. Leases came up as a 25 mark question in June 2016 in the exam. Beautifully predicted, very nice question if you had been prepared for it, which we were. December, I don't know. I haven't got the same red hot feeling. But if you look at the examiner's reports, if you look at what he is writing about, he is very keen on the framework. And the framework talks about the definition of an asset and the definition of a liability. The framework is shaping the future. So if we have an accounting standard that conflicts with the framework, two things. Follow the standard. If there's a conflict between the standard and the framework, follow the standard. You must follow the standard. But it means it's a bad standard, a poor standard. And it means when the standard comes to be overhauled, comes to be reviewed, the standard will be changed in accordance with the framework. Because we need to have core consistent principles to create coherent standards. And ISA 17 is a dinosaur. The classification of finance leases and operating leases is rubbish. Yeah? And so we need to make a change. The change that we will make will be in accordance with the framework. But I think I need to tell you about the change after the break. I think I need to do a small numerical example about the change after the break. But we have now demolished the credibility of the standard and we now need to build up a new standard. Yeah, we need to talk about new proposals. So, yeah, thank you for your patience. Uh, let's take a break at the stage, please.